Oh my God. Well, first of all, I would like to um, apologize for my voice. We're all just getting over the flu here at home, but I'm so excited to get back into the grind. And honestly, I couldn't imagine a better team to do that than with you guys, um, Britt and um, Alexi. Everybody has been so welcoming in the what almost month well two months and a half now that I've been with you um it's been the wildest journey and I'm so thankful that I found Q and Q came into my life but I know that a lot of times we tend to see people's success and we just immediately default to oh she probably has like a really strong Instagram following or oh it's got to be easier for her oh she probably just got lucky oh this all that all that and you know what a lot of people just don't see is what goes behind the scenes all the work all the sleepless nights all of the early rising mornings right all of the things that we have to do in order to really define what our path is going to be like so just to give you guys a little bit of perspective um, on where I come from um thank you Britt for that honestly like humbling introduction it's still a little bit weird if you guys know me and you get to meet me I'm like just really down to earth and really funny and I say really inappropriate things all the time which Jake totally um totally thinks I'm crazy like 97 percent of the time but that's just me um I'm a mama of two I have an eight-month-old and a six-year-old I'm married to my high school sweetheart we met on a random cruise and we just like lived two blocks from each other and we've been together ever since um i am a retired higher education administrator i had a very successful career in the field for over a decade i was a part-time professor like from the outside looking in you guys i had like the dream life but i was miserable my schedule revolved around my boss i worked directly for the president of the university i traveled on holidays it was just crazy and network marketing just fell into my lap at a point in my life where we were honestly even though my husband had just graduated from law school and i made a really good income we were desperate those student loans were drowning us so i started my previous venture i was with my company for almost four years I hit almost, I mean, the second to last rank in the compensation plan. I made the big bucks. I did all of that, but I felt empty, empty. And you want to know why I felt empty? Because success is only sweet if you get to share it with people. Success is only sweet if you have somebody next to you to grab onto and say, we did it, right? The trips are great. And it got really like, yay, it was fun. I earned every trip. I think I earned like 10 or 11 trips. But I would go alone or I would go with my best friend who was the only other person qualifying, right? So when I when I found Q through its products, I saw an opportunity for me to actually have a tangible effect on people's lives, okay? So when you have such a big um, motivation behind switching companies, when you have such a big motivation that it's not just earning a bigger paycheck, right? or being able to earn a trip when your motivation is literally changing people's lives and getting people to get an extra $250 in their pockets, well, you have to kind of walk the walk, okay? And a lot of times I feel, I'm not gonna lie, I walk into a room with all of you guys and I'm intimidated by you guys because I think a lot of you guys, A, have been here way longer than me, okay? Have probably given this business a, a lot longer devotion than I have in what, two and a half months, but you know what? I started stripping away all of those insecurities and that imposter syndrome. And I started to realize that the one thing that I loved about Q was that everybody had a shot at making it. No matter when you started, no matter what your Instagram looked like, no matter what you look like, no matter what, nothing. It doesn't matter. No matter if you want to lose weight, gain weight, if you just want energy, it didn't matter. Okay. And that is something that I'm going to teach you guys tonight. It's called business posture. Okay. A lot of time people tell me, my God, like, I can't believe how you're able to present the business and the opportunity so clearly, so passionately, so effectively when you've only been doing this for literally two and a half months. And that is because I have conviction. Okay. So the first step I want to talk to you, the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is presenting the opportunity, right? Like people say, Claude, how were you able to recruit? I think it was like, I don't know. I think it was 113 people on month one. I think last month, I, I believe it was like, I don't know. It was like 50 something. I don't remember right now. Right. Why? Because when I talk to somebody about this business opportunity, there is no reason. There is no way that given all the information that I give them, they're going to tell me no. Okay. The problem is that we fail to listen. When you guys have a potential, do you guys tend to do most of the talking or does your potential do the talking? 
Okay. I remember when I started in network marketing, I would get somebody on the phone, you guys. And I was just so excited that they were on the phone that I wouldn't stop talking. I would be like, oh my God, because Q is so amazing because we have different, five, we have five different ways. And oh my God, did you know about the financial freedom movement? And then you have all of this, but let me tell you something, because if you sell 25,000, you know what would happen? The potential would literally be like, hey, Claudia, thank you so much. Um, that sounds interesting, but I just don't think it's for me. And then I would become defensive. Like, what do you mean it's not for you? But don't you know this is the best thing ever? And I learned that what happens to a lot of us is we tend to come off as experts. We know everything about our business. We know everything there is to know about Q. But to that person, the FFM, it's just three letters. It has no meaning to them. It's literally like ABC. It could mean anything. We know what it means. We know what it stands for. We know what it could do to somebody's life. But when you're talking to somebody, you have to remember that you were once in their shoes. Okay. So in order to have business posture, you need to drop your ego, right? And check it at the door. And you need to have an actual genuine conversation with somebody because they are going to themselves tell you why they need this business. Okay. So you're just going to have a conversation. Okay. When you're pitching the business, when you're talking to somebody that is not in an opportunity call setting and just in an opportunity call, that's very structured, right? Like I go, I do what Jay taught me. Boom, slide, slide. Don't talk too much. Boom, boom. Okay. When I'm talking about the opportunity, it's different. All right, Katie. So, you know, I'm so excited that you want to learn more about Q. Can I ask you a question? Is this your first um, encounter with um, business ownership? Is this the first time that you're going to be a business owner? Katie may say, no, actually, my husband and I own a cupcake shop. No, um, I was a hairstylist. No, um, yes, it is. Okay, can I ask you a question? Have you ever um, tried network marketing? Okay, you guys, I'm going to have a very different conversation with Katie if she's never been a business owner. I'm going to have a very different conversation with Katie if she's been a business owner. And I'm going to have a very different conversation with Katie if she's been a business owner in a network marketing industry. Very different. The person that has nothing, no knowledge of business, we're going to talk about what it takes to be a business owner. Responsibilities, showing up. The person that's had a business before, all right, can you tell me more about that business? You know, was it a brick and mortar? Was it like e-commerce? Let's talk a little bit more about that. Or the person that's been a network marketer. You guys, the third is my favorite. That's the easiest, most of the time, okay? So then how do you present the opportunity? Well, you have to listen. What do they want from Q? I always slot them in one, at least one of our five Fs. Just one. If it's finances, what are they looking to get out of their finances? Do they need money? Okay, are they in debt? Okay, family. Are they looking for a community? Is that very important to them? Do they want to spend more time at home? So I have to fill in those gaps and only I can, I can only do that if I listen to them because I have to paint a picture of how we're going to bridge, right? Those solutions for them. And I have to paint a picture as to how Q is going to supplement their life, not just with supplements. Okay. I can say exactly how Q has supplements in my life. Can you guys actually tell somebody how Q has supplemented yours? Okay. That's very important. But the problem is that a lot of times we see pitching as a chore. It's a bore. It's annoying. I don't want to be on the phone. So we're talking to somebody and we're like, this is, oh my God. It's very different. When I talk to somebody about the business, you guys, it's exciting. I'm excited. Why would I want to join a business with somebody who is like, this is, um, he was just like super cool. Um, and yeah, like sometimes I like it and, um, Sometimes we have calls. No. Okay. And you don't have to be me and you don't have to match my crazy energy level, right? But you do have to be excited because why would anybody trust you or want to join a business with you that you're kind of iffy about and you kind of don't really know how the compensation plan works. And I think it's five ways, could be six, could be four. No. Hey, we earn five different ways. I'm going to tell you the ways because guess what? Here. If you do not want to build a team, that's cool. If you want to build a team, that's cool too. If you don't want to pick one or the other, better. When you talk to somebody like that, that's conviction. That's posture. 
that says, hold up, Katie, I want to keep hearing. Like, what do you, what do you got to say? I don't got to build a team. Like I thought in network marketing, it was all about just like asking people to join your team. Not here, not at Q. And guess what? You have access to the same pay, same promos, same trips. You have access to the same everything. So how cool is it that right now you can choose to not want to build a team? grow your sales. But if in two months, Katie, if you change your mind and mentorship is something that you get a calling for, guess what? You got to pick. You can keep growing your customer base. Now I'm going to coach you and I'm going to mentor you and I'm going to help you build a team. Right? So different. So different. Okay. We got to get, we got to take out the network marketing stigmas that everybody is tired of hearing. If somebody told me right now that I had to sell that I had to go to somebody's house and like make Tiger Punch for them in order for them to want to join my business, I probably cringe in a corner and just like wilt away. Because I'm willing to do it. Don't get me wrong. Like I am willing to make batches of Tiger Punch for people. But if you had to tell me that I had to go home, home hopping, and I would be like, no, I'm good. Thanks. I'm good. Thank you so much. But I don't want to do that. But that is the traditional lingo that we use in network marketing because it's easier. Okay, you know what you could say? You're like, you know what? We're not a traditional multi-level marketing company. And I'm going to tell you why. And you can talk about having leadership, Jake having 14 years of field experience, right? And being one of your owners. Meaning that man is never going to do something without you, without you as a field leader in mind. You can talk about the fact that we don't have to build a team in order to, um, to grow. You can talk about the fact that here we don't focus on flashy cars and lifestyle bonuses. We care about your financial health, right? Removing all of those little things that we've just associated for so long with network marketing that just turns people off. Okay. But those are the things that unfortunately a lot of people and a lot of old habits, they're just not willing to let it go. And then what happens? People like me, people like my team come in and they're like, oh, we do things different right? And we're willing to learn and we're willing to be coachable, but we're willing to just take network marketing like 2022, like to another level. All right. And then comes in the utilization of our social media. How many of you guys throw one in the chat? If you would say that you primarily do your business on social media. All right. All right. Perfect. Yes, Sydney. Oh, hey, Sydney. I see you. Ciao, babe. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys, I run my business 98% on social media. I am launching a team who's not public yet. They have learned how to do their business 98% in person. And I told them straight up, I could learn so much from you guys because I need to learn. But I run my business on social media. Now, if I'm going to run my business on social media, like most of you guys on here, I need to be the best at running a business on social media. The best. I need to know everything there is to know about social media. I need to know everything there is to know about using my algorithm. What's up with reels? How do I get paid on reels? How do I maximize my audience? What does my audience look like? Is it males, females? What's the age, right? What does my brand look like? You guys, I've made so much money off making Silly reels. Thank you, my love. I appreciate you. Silly reels. Like, I did a reel on my dog today. I probably make at least 100 bucks off that reel. Okay? I know. I know, Alexei. I know that it's a love-hate relationship. But you guys, right now, Instagram literally came out and said, this is how we're going to prioritize accounts. The accounts that are making reels are the accounts that are being seen. So if you're running a business on social media, how are you going to actually ignore exactly what the platform is telling you? that you have to do in order to grow. You can't, because if not, guess what? Get off Instagram and go work your business somewhere else. And I know, guys, this is me. You're gonna, this, I, I call it like I see it. I'm very honest and I'm very raw, okay? But that's the problem. You hate reels. I hate them too, trust me. I cringe, 95% of the time I cringe at them. I'm like, I look ridiculous. But you know what? That's how I grown my account. You wanna know how I went from 900 followers to almost, wait, I don't know, 21, 22,000? Organic, pumping out organic content. The second reels became a thing. You go back, you guys. I have so many reels. Okay. You have to utilize your social media. What does your content look like? 
I don't know if you guys have seen, I, I have this thing where I joined this, it was called the social studio for $28 a month. They make all the content for you. I don't ever have to worry about cute content. It's all made for me. It's all there. I go, I open my Canva. I change a few pictures. I make it Claudia and I upload it. If you go to my Instagram, there will always be business content. There will always be something about products and there will always be something about my life, about me, my kids, my cooking, whatever it is, because I'm still me. It's called the social studio shelves. It's called join the social studio.com. Okay. You tell them I sent you, they're going to give you a little discount. Okay. So when you go to my Instagram, does it tell you who I am aside from Q sciences? Does it tell you who I am aside from mom, from wife, from liking fashion, from posting reels? I'm going to share with you guys. I'm going to do it because it's you guys and I love you guys so much. I'm going to share with you a recruitment one-on-one -on -one call that I did that talks all about how easy it is to set up your social media brand. The problem is a lot of people will say, I'm not an influencer. I'm just not that person. The second you sell one thing to somebody, right? You're an influencer. The second, like anybody replies, like, Sophie, can you please take the dog outside? The second anybody replies like, hey, where'd you get that necklace? Guess what? You're an influencer. So don't attach a negative stigma to it. Own it. You're an influencer with the number one wellness company in the world. Like psh, people are out there selling goalie vitamins. I'm going to tell you guys something. Goalie paid me $150 for a whole month of me pro like promoting their products. $150. You guys. What? That's a slap in the face. You guys know you can make that, but just like literally you hit builder and you make $150 the first time you hit it. You can make 250 bucks by selling $1,500 worth of product plus commission. Think about that. You are an influencer. Okay. It goes back to business posture. Okay. How you show up. How you show up with somebody on the phone, how you show up to somebody on, on Instagram, how you show up to a conversation. Let's wrap up the third one. I was at dinner with Jake, Mark, Brittany, Nick. I don't think you were there, Britt. Oh, did you? No, you didn't go to the dinner. That was the day after the event. We walk into this restaurant in Nashville and you can tell this poor waitress is so overwhelmed. So overwhelmed. Like she tells us, she's like, it's me and somebody else. The restaurant was slammed. There's nowhere to eat in Nashville after like 10 30. We were starving. I see her and I'm with one of my leaders, Jessica, and I tell her, we know this. I said, Yo, this girl is willing to be a waitress in this restaurant at almost 11 30 at night. There's no reason why this girl wouldn't be able to sell supplements online. So I waited until after the dinner. And I tell Brittany, I'm like, I'm going to go talk to her. And she's like, you serious? I'm like, you don't understand. I will never pass up an opportunity to talk to somebody about this opportunity. I pull her to the side and I say, you know, <clears throat> what's your name again? Jalen, she tells me. And I'm like, listen, I just want to tell you, like, thank you for being so gracious in such a crazy environment. Our food was great. It was hot. You were so sweet. You were so kind. We asked you for extra sauce. You brought it never like a smidge of attitude. And I want to like, I commend you for that. Now, I also want you to know that you do not have to do this and I can show you how. And she's like, you can tell me how not to work here. And I was like, absolutely. I can teach you how not to work here. I said, have you ever tried network marketing? She's like, no, I don't. I mean, I don't really know. I'm like, listen, we're not your mom and pop's network marketing company. Do you use social media? Yeah, of course. Like I'm on the gram. She tells me, I'm like, girl, I'm on the gram too. I'm like, do you have your phone? I know you're not supposed to pull it out. She's like, she pulls out her phone and I'm like, here, I want you to follow. Let's follow each other. I go, I'm an influencer again for the number one wellness company, fastest growing um, wellness company in the entire world. Do you think you can share supplements, wellness products, energy products on your Instagram? She goes, absolutely. I go, great. Okay, so I'm going to reach out to you. We're going to have a call. So I already met with her. I already met with her. I had a call with her. I pitched her the business. I know exactly what she needs. She's a broke college student, okay, who is a waitress, who's barely making enough to pay for her car and her cell phone. 
I taught her exactly how to make 950 well, with bonuses, okay? But I taught her how to make $750 her first month. She's gonna sign up. When you tell somebody, I can show you how to make $750, tell me no. They're not gonna tell you no, you guys. They're not gonna tell you no, okay? But my last point in that is, it takes consistency. Because I could sit here and tell you all of these things and you can get off this call and be like, oh, that sounds so amazing. Like, oh, cool. Thanks, Britt, for bringing on Claude. But if you don't do any of the things that we teach you, and if you're not consistent with them, we might as well just not have done any of this. Britt might as well just not, co not coach you. <coughs> None of it. And that is what sets apart the people that say that they want to, right? Like you want to be the 1%. Okay, well, do you know what the 1% does? right? I'll sit here until three o'clock in the morning, sick as a dog. It does not even matter to me. I have so many reports that my assistant sent me that I have to go through and I have to probably send out between 500 to 600 messages before I go to bed, but I will do them. I will do them because it is in my best interest to make sure that everybody in my team is winning. And if there is somebody 17 points away from builder, they need to know. Because Friday is all upon us. And we got to close that ring because they need a paycheck. Okay? So you have to be consistent. You have to show up even when you don't want to. Okay? You have to have that dedication, that work ethic. Because I always think if Brit is doing it, I'm no different than Brit. Brit is a black diamond making $120,000 a month. If she sits there and runs reports and sends messages, I can do it too. I'm just a measly platinum. Like, I'm literally like, in my eyes, I'm the girl that didn't hit Ruby last month. Like, that's how hard I am on myself. Like, you missed it by 8,000 points. You suck, right? That's what I, that's me, okay? So if I'm able to do that and I coach my girls how to do that, we all have to be doing that. Because the problem is that we tend to adjust our goals because we're afraid right, of the work. We're like, no, I don't really want to, like, I know that I said I wanted to go for gold, but I'm just going to like maybe just tone it down to silver because I know what I have to do to get to gold. And I just don't really want to work that hard. Like you just adjusted your goal. Like you, you, you just accepted like something less than what you deserve. Something less than what you're worthy of because it's hard work. Yeah, it's going to be hard work. Of course, it's going to be hard work. Nobody said it's easy. Nobody says they're just going to go ahead and like, here, here's 100 ambassadors. You guys, you got to work for them. Because I'm out there on my Instagram going live and doing reels and sending reach outs and talking to people, going to my grocery store. I'm doing all of it. Yeah. I'm hosting boot camps for my executives. And then when they hit executive, I'm hosting presentation boot camps so that then they can present, so that then I can send people to their calls, so that then we can keep growing. That's just the way that it is. And that is a problem. A lot of people don't want to hear that because I'm going to tell you guys right now, you may get off this call and be like, you know what? I'm cool with exec. Like, I'm cool with $250 a month. And I got those people. But if you're here and you want to go for like silver, you want to go for gold, you want to go bronze, elite, you got to work because I'm out there out hustling every single one of you guys. I can actually guarantee you that, okay? I can literally almost guarantee it. So I'll hustle me. When I came into this company, Brittany Hitch told me, I dare you to take my number one spot. Go to the back office. I'm like, now I dare you to claim it back. She dared me. She's like, go for it. Beat me. I want you to outrank me, out earn me. And that's what I tell my girls. Outrank me. Out earn me. Because that's my success. All of your success is her success. That's her biggest leadership legacy. Your success. Because this is not easy. Network marketing, you guys. I have to tell you something. I had one of the most demanding jobs in my career. Like my career was so demanding. And then I taught, you know, undergrad for two and a half years. And that was just, that was something else. Okay. 
This is so much harder. And you want to know why? Because there is nobody next to me telling me that I have to do it. There is just two little kids, one in front of me right now, reminding me that I'm no quitter and reminding me of why I do this. Okay? Because I never, ever, ever want to miss another moment. And so network marketing is my vessel. In my vessel, guess what? I will bring on as many as I can, okay? I will give them all the tools and all the resources, but it's up to all of you guys to implement, to remain consistent, to do the work. Because I promise you, there is always somebody out there out hustling you, okay? My tough love, real raw moments are over. (laughs) If you guys have any questions, I have all the time in the world for you guys. So please feel free to unmute yourselves, to chat, to ask me any questions that you may have. I have a question. (laughs) What's up, Shelby? Surprise there. Um, Okay, so my struggle is that I have three children, three and under, and I'm home with them. So I'm struggling on like finding how to build my schedule throughout the day to like dedicate time to Q and actually like grow my business. So how do you do that as a mom with young kids? And like, what does your daily schedule look like to be able to accomplish everything that you need to accomplish? Okay. So the first thing is I'm going to give you a disclaimer. You have to give yourself some grace. I used to be very hard on myself on this. I'm a block scheduler. So my mornings are from like, I schedule from wake up and stretch to make my beds, to organize the home, to Nico naps, to drive to Sophia's school, right? I organize everything in slots. Now, block scheduling for me works because it allows me to focus on what I'm supposed to be doing and nothing else. So at first, a lot of people will have a hard time with the fact that I'm not answering my text messages. Well, I'm not supposed to be answering text messages right now, right? So I'm not supposed to be on my chats until 10. From 10 to 10.30, I only do chats check-ins. So I'm on my chats, I'm responding, I'm doing all of that. After that, I have a 30-minute social media block. So I'm on my social media, I'm engaging, I'm doing that. I'm not texting, I'm not texting. This goes on focus mode. I get no notifications, okay? Because what happens to us is we try to be good at everything. We end up being good at nothing. We kind of answered our texts, but kind of went on social media. And then it's just a hot mess, right? We don't don't accomplish much. So set boundaries. Let your team know. Hey, guys, I'm going to be trying something new. Before I can pour into all of you, I need to pour into myself. I need to make sure like my home is good. I need to make sure my mindset is right. I need to do my morning prayers, my devotionals, whatever it is that we do. I need to be okay before I can pour into you guys. And that may not be until 11 or 12 o'clock. That's okay. Your team would much much rather have you focused for 30 minutes to an hour than scatterbrained for five minutes here, five minutes there and everywhere. Okay. Now, Nighttime for me, I am a night owl. I love it. I will sit here. I started calls today. I think it was 7.30. No, 8 o'clock today. I will sit here until, like I said, I will likely be here until 3 o'clock in the morning. And I know that I have to give up a little bit of sleep because I can't sit here and tell you that I want to go for Emerald and not put in the work. So my hustle has to match my goals, Right. Now, that's not every day. Don't get scared, right? Give yourself a block of what? Maybe two hours that you know the kiddos are already asleep. But also very important, and I'm going to tell you because I made the mistake, schedule time for your spouse, for your partner, for yourself, for you to sit down and literally do nothing if you want to do nothing. To binge watch Real Housewives, whatever it is. I used to not do that. I burned myself out. Okay. Now that me time now is during the day, right? Because Nico's second nap is mommy me time. Like I am, I'm doing nothing. I'm not touching my business. 
I'm not with the kids. Like he is asleep. So he is at dance. Like it's just me time. Right. I know the second that that me time is over, it's like run to dance and pick up Sophia, come back home, get dinner ready, feed them dinner. And then guess what? Boom. The second that door is closed, like she's here right now. Cause unfortunately my husband's at a family funeral. If not like Anthony and Sophia would be outside. And I like, it's, we don't talk to mommy. Like they know we don't talk to mommy while mommy's at the office. Like this is just like daddy goes to work for eight hours a day, nine hours. Like mommy works at nighttime. Okay. Does that help you, Shel? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? I question, but I can't unmute. Oh, Michelle, I don't know. Did you quit your job and then grow your last business? No. Okay. So a lot of people, um, I grew my highest to my highest rank, my highest everything in my business, working my job, which was not even full-time, you guys. My job was like 60, 70 hours a week. Um, I also had signed legal paperwork that um, I could not work my business during, like when I was there, um, even though I was everybody's boss where I worked. So I was held at a higher standard, obviously. And I understood that. So I signed the document. It was fine. So I basically would, during my lunchtime, if I ate that day, because most days I would just sit at my desk, I would catch up on my business, but then it was the same thing. So I would work, I would wake up an hour before everybody in the mornings and do a power hour. And then I would do another hour after everybody went to bed and do another power hour. I actually grew my business strictly on power hours for about a year and a half before I really, really like reached the pinnacle of you know, like the seven figure, like the big time, right? That was like, and I have to tell you, I know it's kind of crazy, but sometimes I feel like I was more productive when I had a full-time job than I am now, full disclosure. Because I have all this time, right? Like I had to learn how to manage, right? Like, what do I do with all of this time? Um, And then now it's like, what do I do with all this time and a baby and then my daughter and dance and she dances competitively. So her schedule is like madness, you know, like craziness. Um, so I hope that helps Michelle. If you could only spend 50 to 20 minutes a day to do this, would you record reels? Would you do reach outs? If I'm going to be so honest with you, if I would spend 15 to 20 minutes a day only on my business, I probably would just work the um, CD side of the compensation plan. And I would probably just reach out to people for sales. I'm going to be extremely transparent. I hope you guys appreciate that. It's just, it's, it's impossible. I would say you have to give it an hour, an hour a day. Yes. I'm sorry. You mentioned taking your team who are wanting to an executive through something. And then, yes. So basically I take everybody, um, my biggest goal is to get everybody to executive. That was like, that's my biggest, I just want everybody at executive. So once I get everybody through executive, um, then I teach them how to get others to executive. And how do we do that? Most importantly, the first step is presenting. Every executive should be presenting once or twice a week at the very minimum, like no questions asked. So I have what I call the 1500 club, which is all of my executives. And in there, it's basically like an accountability system. Like where are your calls? What are you doing? When are you sharing them? Who's going to them? Um, what's your, like, I just, I keep them very accountable. Your executives they're literally like the breeding grounds of your next silvers. Like they are, they are the future of your business. So you want to make sure you keep them trained. You have to make sure that they're presenting the opportunity. You have to make sure that they are literally like nonstop at Nazium like Q. So those are, that's, that's like your, your next generation. So you have to focus on them a lot. So what is presenting? Presenting is presenting the business. So the slideshow um, that is presenting the opportunity. So that's, that's the expectation. But guys, the math is simple and Jake says that the person with the most presenters and the person presenting the most is who needs, um, who's going to, um, who's going to be, um, you know, achieving the fastest growth. But if you're new, please don't stress about that. That's not, that's not it right now. I don't want you to worry about that right now, please. Okay. You will be taught. Okay. Do you recommend all your reels include Q? No, no, please don't. Um, your reels should, um, there's two different reels that I encourage you guys to make. Relatable real life reels. Today I posted one really funny about my dog because um, he lives the best life. And then I posted one about my daughter yesterday. You also live the best life. Um, <laughs> um, and here's the thing. When you do Q content, 
we're going to share that content. Like your Q fam is going to share the content. Ambassadors is going to share that content. <clears throat> That's boosting your algorithm, but also it's bringing traffic to your page. You never know who shares your content and somebody goes to their page and they see your reel. Then they go to your page and they connect with you and all of a sudden realize they want to do the business with you. That's why it's important to do business reels. Okay. Now real life reels, they get shared by everybody. That's how you can go viral. Okay. And then the same thing, you never know who is going to share something of yours that will attract new people to your page. Okay. So when you do reels and you see new people coming through your page, appreciate them. Like, Hey, thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. It's nice connecting with you on here. Like something super simple. You don't have to be weird. Your Instagram is like your home. You allow people to come in and stay if you want them to stay. And also, I think it's polite to say hi to everybody that comes on, like they walk in through your home, like, hi, thanks for coming to my house. It's really nice to have you on here. Um, so it's very important that you connect that at the end, because if you just batch content, and you're not connecting or engaging, then it could definitely get a little bit overwhelming for yourself. And then for the person, because then they could come back and say like, why did I even follow this person? Like, I don't really find value. So just connect with them, like something super simple. Like, hey, thanks for the follow. Love connecting with you on here. Okay. But I'm going to share with you guys a recruitment one-on-one call that I have as part of, as part of my onboarding. Um, so you guys can watch it. And I think it would it's going to really, really help you guys. And so I don't want you guys to, to worry about it. I'm actually looking it up as we speak. <laughs> do you guys have any anything? I do. Um, so while you're doing that, uh, it's something you should be able to multitask. Um, yeah. How are you spending your time on social media when you are not creating content, when you're not posting? Because everything we've ever read says, don't post and ghost. Don't run away that Instagram or Facebook don't like it. So how are you making sure you're not getting sucked in to social media? Because that's how they make their money is by sucking up your time. So Absolutely. how do you make it work for you? Yes. So don't just scroll social media. Um, I even, I'm going to give you guys a disclaimer. Don't, um, if you do this, I'm going to tell you to stop doing it. Don't follow a bunch of like cute people on your social media, because first of all, your feed is going to get just clogged with people that already do the business. We're in the business of networking, right? Meeting new people. Okay. So the first thing is just to make sure you follow, you know, your uplines, people that you look up to that have good content that inspire and motivate you. And then I just follow my direct online. Just them, right? Okay, so that's the first thing. So then when you go to your Instagram, for me, it's about just connecting with people. So you can do it different ways. Um, every day, I try to connect with 10 different accounts, 10 new accounts that I have not had any engagement with before. So what do I do? I go to their page. I like their posts. Their last probably like five posts. I'll comment on about three of their posts. Um, make sure that you're actually commenting something that matches what they're posting about because... <sighs> Let me tell you, I'll tell you guys a story just to like keep it real. Um, and last year we had a miscarriage and I posted this picture and I talked about my experience. I hadn't shared it. I shared it, got vulnerable. Somebody commented on my, you can tell that they were just like, oh my God, your outfit is like so dope. And I was like, oh my God, like it's a post about having a miscarriage and going through that suffering, but thanks. Ever since that day, I never failed to mention this. Because a lot of times we go so fast, we don't even read the caption. So it's so important that we actually read what the caption says so that we can be genuine in what we're telling them and what we're commenting. Okay, Britt, so I'll go and I'll find 10 new accounts. I create a folder on my Instagram and I add them to them. And I will engage with these accounts. Okay, I will go back every single day and I will just engage and I get new accounts, right? And I'll go and I'll do the same thing. I'm trying to bring people into my page. I'm trying to bring visitors in that are going to like my content enough to give me a follow. Once you have that follow, it's important to maintain it. How do we do that with the content that we share in our stories? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do all of my stories. I'm going to go, I'm going to put my content and then I'm going to go and I'm going to engage with these people so that there's something for them to come back to. Today I did that and I forgot that I hadn't posted my business content. So I went, I went to my folder because I have everything batched and I went and I posted it very quickly and I got two people already, two people that want to ask me about the compensation plan, okay? Because so I posted about that and I engaged with them. So immediately when they went to my page, they saw something, okay? So it's important, like you said, like don't just post and leave because if you post and leave, then it's kind of like, it's like a dud. You're kind of wasting the real estate that is your, your Instagram. 
there is um, the 180 method. I recommend you guys look it up. I'm not going to go into detail, but if you Google it, it's the 180 method. It teaches you about how to strategically engage with accounts every single day. Okay. Now it takes a lot of work. I will probably tell you that if you do the 180, if you want to try to do the 180, I would say break it up in three throughout the day because it could get a little bit overwhelming if you're kind of new to social media. Um, something else, and if you're newer to social media, if you're newer to network marketing, then I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and recommend this. Um, focus on five potentials this month, five accounts, and just like get to know everything about them, right? Like, think about it. What if you're if you just followed me? For a whole month, I want you to like my posts. I want you to look at my stories. I want you to know what makes me me. Because you guys, I promise you that you are going to see our five Fs and people that that's going to give you the answer of why you need to pitch the business to them. So in a month's time, when you slide into their DMs and you say, by the way, Katie, Listen, I'm going to just run something absolutely crazy by you. And it's absolutely crazy. But can I ask you a question? Send. He's going to come back like, yeah, hey, Con, of course. Like, what you, what's up? Have you ever considered doing what I do? Question. Send. Two things could happen. I don't know what you do. Okay. Right. Or, yeah, actually, I do know what you do, but I don't know much about it to share more information with me, right? Like, think about the difference versus you sliding into somebody's DM like, hey, girl, just met ya, and this is crazy, but here's my number. I do Q scientists to come join me. Like, no, that's weird. I would be like, no, that's crazy. Um, block right? Like not, not, hey girl, hey babe, hey sweetie, hey, hey Katie, because I have a relationship with Katie because I've been following her for a month. I know all about her. We've talked about different things. I've asked her for genuine questions or we've interacted genuinely on something. You guys, somebody, one of my potentials posted about Spanx. And I was like, oh my God, I use those. So I was like, oh my God, Jenny, I swear by those, you are going to love them. By the way, let me tell you a little bit about sizing. And I had this whole conversation about sizing in Spanx. But you know what? I'm getting to know her. And we're having actual interactions. And I know you think I'm crazy, but it's so much better than randomly sliding into somebody's DM telling them about how great your company is. Because today it's Spanx. Tomorrow it's about an activity that she did with her kids that I could do with my kids. And so I could ask her about it too. And maybe I post my tortilla soup recipe today and Jenny's going to be like, hey, Claude, I'd love tortilla soup. Can you mind sharing the recipe with me? And then in two weeks, it's not weird when I tell her, have you thought about doing what I do? I know that you love to spend time with your kids. I do too. That's why I do this. Am I crazy? You guys think I'm crazy. It's like, I'm a little crazy. Hey, Claudia, do you engage uh, mostly with people that are already in network marketing or just people that you resonate with that you would like? Like, I just connect with people. My avatar is somebody, my avatar is like, basically your avatar is your dream potential. Um, somebody who um, shows up on, on social media. I don't really care about aesthetic. Yeah, that doesn't, that is not my, I don't care. But that they show up, right? Somebody who's on their stories, who posts, who is able to share, who, who seems like somebody who's willing to share. Um, I do connect a lot and resonate a lot with moms because I can help moms stay home with their kids. And that is like, to me, the greatest blessing I could give anybody. Because I know that's what network marketing did for me, right? Um, I tend to connect with people who are like, who make fun of like working out and funny things like that, because I just thought I'm not that person. Like I'm not big into working out. Sorry, Stacey Kimball. I love them so much. I'm not. So like people that post like funny memes about like stuff, I don't connect with like, my best friend is crunchy. Like, if you know Lynn, she's like, she sat with Ann for like two hours, you guys, and drilled Ann on ingredients. And I was like, I eat chicken nuggets. Like, I love chicken nuggets, right? Like, that's just me. So I'm not crunchy. So like somebody who's very like into things like my best friend is, 
that's her avatar. That's not my avatar. Like I'm the tire mom who needs tire punch. Okay. And Cuban coffee 20 times a day. All right. So that's who I connect with. Now, maybe they're network marketing. Maybe they're not. Okay. Does this help? All right, Bray, any other questions? You guys, anything else? Let me see the chat. I never thought of that. Yeah. No, I think I we're just good. Have to say thank I you. Yeah. Thank you very much. We like definitely appreciate your time. And I don't want to take up more of it. Um, but we we so appreciate you. That was like really, really good and insightful. And I just like again. You taking the time. I know you're sick because I've been sick too. So I know how you're feeling. And I just like really, really appreciate you being I on. I've thought of canceling. I'm sending you guys two trainings that I want you guys to watch. Um, thank you for having me on here. Honestly, um, I just, I want to tell you guys, I want to leave you with one thing is um, don't compare your journey to anybody else's. This is, this is your mountain to climb. This is all about you and what makes you um, special. So don't compare your chapter 20 to somebody's chapter one or your chapter one to somebody's chapter 20. Um, just remember why you're here. Remember why you hit submit on that little button to become an ambassador. Um, and just give it your all. Like if you fail tomorrow, know that if you gave it your all, like you still succeeded, right? Um, we define failure. So give your, give yourself some grace. And, and I'm always here for you guys. Honestly, feel free to reach out to me on social media, whatever you need. Um, I, I literally, I will always reply. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to send you another video. I'm trying to literally get you guys all of my videos <laughs> so that you can copy them and put them on there. Oh, Claudia, if it's easier, you can send them to me. Yeah. I'll just send it to you too. Yeah. That's so yeah. much easier. And then I'll just go ahead and I'll drop it in our team chat. <laughs> Yay. Okay. I sent you guys too, but I'll look for more stuff that I think you guys could definitely benefit from. I'm always here. My resources are your resources. We're all big, one big team. So thank you guys. Thank you, Britt. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you, Alexi. Thank you, everybody. I love you guys so much. Bye. Bye. Uh, thank you.